Hi, once again, I hope you continue to find these videos helpful for your EOC review. This is EOC review number three, part three, operating, factoring, and writing equivalent expressions. These are the standards in the Math 3 curriculum that are covered. Um, the one thing we want to make sure is just making sure we know our factoring rules. We know how to add, subtract, and multiply. I'm not doing division because that's going to be a separate video. Um, and um, we'll get right into it. Here are some of the rules on factoring if you want to write those down. And let's get started. All right, so this first question, we have two functions, 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, and gx equals negative 4x plus 5. We want to know what is f of x minus gx. Now, it seems simple. You know, we're just doing basic subtraction. What people can get caught up on is not using parentheses and distributing negatives correctly. So f of x is going to be 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. When I minus g of x, you're subtracting the whole function. So we're actually doing negative 4x plus 5 in the parentheses. And so that means I'm going to distribute a negative into both terms. So that's actually going to be plus 4x, since that was a negative 4x, and minus 5, since that's a positive 5. So if I re rewrite everything, I have 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. And now I can combine all my like terms. Now, one thing that I do notice is that I have a negative 2x and a 4x there. And those are going to combine to um, 2x. And I have a positive 1 and a negative 5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. But I don't have a like term for 3x squared. So that's going to be 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. I also keyed some things into Desmos to help you check your work. Don't feel like you have to do this if you're if you're consistently getting questions like these correctly. But one thing you can do for ex equivalent expressions with one variable in Desmos is you can key in the original expression, which was just subtracting those numbers. And then my answer, 3x squared plus 2x minus 4, should overlap the graph. I'm going to erase this work here, so write it down if you need to. Um, there's the graph of the subtractions before simplification. There's the other graph after simplification. Notice it's the same graph. So overlapped graph means I did the work correctly. And you can do that for any one variable expression. But if you have two variables, you can't really do that because you have to, you can't really uh, plug a number in for y and expect it to be consistent throughout, if that makes sense. All right, next question. What is f of x times g of x? See if you can try this. This is going to be uh, uh, multiplication, so you might utilize a uh, box method or FOIL or uh, whatever kind of helps distribute those terms into each other. Pause the video and try it on your own. Multiplication would look like this if you're setting it up. You could also put a time symbol in between them, although it's not necessary. So um, we're going to write something like that with two sets of parentheses. Well, not required, it might be useful to set it up into a box so you can keep track of all your terms. This is how I do it, uh, anything with more than two terms. So see if you can multiply those together. Remember, you multiply your coefficients, and then the exponents get added when you multiply two exponents with the same base. So I'll work those out in a second. Pause the video and try it on your own. Multiplying within gives you the following terms, negative 12x cubed, 8x squared, negative 4x, 15x squared, minus 10x, and positive 5. And those just come from multiplying every pair of terms together. So these get multiplied together, those get multiplied together, and those get multiplied together. Um, laying it all in a box kind of helps simplify where they go. The next thing is you want to combine like terms. So anything with the same exponent for your variable will get added for the coefficients. And when we simplify that, we're going to get negative 12x cubed, positive 23x squared, minus 14x, and plus 5. And once again, check your graph on this one. There's no shame in making sure you're thorough when you're taking your EOC. You get over three, you get three hours. I mean, you, you can, you have time to go through and check, does my answer line up with this? And you can see we're good, especially if it's multiple choice, you can actually key in your answers and figure out which graph gives you the same one as the original expression. All right, on to the next question. Speaking of multiple choice questions, you have the option on these when you take your EOC, um, since you have all your answer choices already in front of you, if you take original expression, this only works with one variable, mind you, uh, if you put that into a graph, you can go through and find your answers and see which one is going to give you the same graph. So without even lifting a pencil, I can say, well, let me put A, B, C, and D in incorrectly. A looks like it's overlapping that graph exactly. I'll double check the other ones. B is too narrow. 
C is too left and high, and D is also too left and high. It's way up here. So the only answer that actually gives you the same graph is going to be A. So I know my answer should be A. You may also want to see this worked out because you're going to have some questions that actually have to, you have to type in the or drag and drop correct terms and expressions in the right spot uh, for the simplified form. So here's how that's going to be worked out. Um, we're going to have uh, x minus 4 squared. First thing I want to do is maybe write that x minus 4 twice since it's squared. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply x minus 4 squared. You can use a box, or you could just multiply them together um, using FOIL, any technique that multiplies and distributes correctly. Uh, but what that's going to end up being is x squared minus 4x. And then this is going to be another minus 4x. And negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, positive 16. So you have x squared, the two negative 4x's combined to negative 8x and plus 16. You can also use the shortcut when anytime you're squaring a binomial, you just double the middle term. So negative four times X is gonna get counted twice. And so that's gonna be two in parentheses, X squared minus eight X plus 16, and then plus one. From there, I can distribute the two into all of the terms inside the parentheses. So that'll give me two X squared minus 16 X plus 32, and then I'm going to combine that 32 with the 1 to get the 33. So there you go. All right, uh, write that down. I'm going to go on to the next question. Before I do this work, I'm going to make sure that I know what my answer should be before I put the work down. So that means I'm going to utilize my graph once again. So if I key that in with my original expression, first, followed by the four expressions. Remember, you can hide by clicking the circles here. So when you put an expression in, just click on the circle to hide it so that it doesn't go away completely. So putting my answer choices in, that first one's not going to work. The second one also is a different graph. The third one looks like it lines up. Put that in there. Looks like it's the same one. The fourth one is off. So it looks like it's going to be answer choice C, x cubed plus 3x squared plus 27x plus 8. Now let me show you how to get that by hand. Well, I'm going to start with the x plus 2 cubed part, um, since that's a separate term on the left side. That's going to be written three times, x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. When I multiply the x plus 2 times x plus 2, um, when I simplify that, I get x squared plus 4x plus 4. At that point, I could do a box, x plus 2, x squared plus 4x plus 4. Multiply in, combine like terms, and I get x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. It's a lot to go uh, to, to do and, and easily to make mistakes on it. On the second part, well, that one's considerably less work. You're just distributing negative 3x into the x minus 5. You'll get negative 3x squared plus 15x. When I combine those to the other expression, I'll combine my x squareds. So I'm going to have 6x squared and minus 3x squared to give me positive 3x squared. And then I have 12x and 15x to give me 27x. The other terms don't really combine. So x cubed and this 8 over here are kind of stuck on the front and the, the back side. So you can see by hand it's going to be C, but we also can get on the EOC this answer using graphing technology if you want to save yourself some time for other problems. All right, on to the next question. All right, this question has two variables, x and y. So you're not going to really get away with using a graph to check your answers. I'll show you why. Y'all, I just made a discovery. I stand corrected. You can cheat and use a graph. Watch. You just got to be, uh, you got to make your expression equal to zero. Make yourself an equation. All right, let me show you. I promise you this actually works. So if I actually make this equal to zero, there's a weird looking equation here. Um, but let me show you what the answer should be. Should be the one that has that. Look at the one that, that doesn't have equal zero. It's a different graph. So it's actually going to be D. Um, so when you have two variables, I learned something new. Just put equals zero and you can still get away with it. Now, let me show you how to do this by hand. First rule of factoring is to always find a GCF. 
So GCF is the greatest common factor. We want to find the largest number that can be divided by from both of these. Well, they're both divisible by, let's see, 18 and 32 are both divisible by 2, aren't they? But you'll notice they also have an x in there. So I can pull out a 2x from both of those terms. So that's going to get brought out to the outside, the left of the equation. I have 2x, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. x cubed divided by x is x. Bring this minus down. 32 divided by 2 is 16. x's will cancel out, and so I have y squared. And that's actually x squared, not x. So first thing is I have a 2x on the outside. Therefore, that's not going to work, or that's not going to work. You're going to need an x there. The next is I have two squared terms and a, and a minus sign between. That's a difference of two squares. Remember that a difference of two squares, here's the formula. If you have two things that are squared and subtracted, that can actually be written as the square root of both of those with a plus in between and the square root of both of those with a minus in between. So let's think about what that looks like here. The square root of nine is three. So if I take the square off of the X, I have three X. The square root of four, uh, 16 is four. So I have minus four, take the square off Y. But I also wanna have one identical with a plus inside of them. So three X plus four Y. Now, it doesn't matter which order you put the minus or plus, so D is going to be your answer choice on that one. But again, if you put equals zero, equals zero, equals zero, equals zero, you can actually also match up your graph that way too. So we learned something new today. All right, look at the next video, or the next uh, last question on this video. In this problem, we don't have answer choices, so we can't get away with checking our graphs. This is going to be a, a cube graph. Look at, we have a 24, we have an 81. And what I notice is I can divide 24 and 81 by a number and you can, you can try to play around with it, but they should all be divisible by three. So if you, if you take the three out of those, that's gonna be three. 24 divided by three is eight. So eight X cubed. 81 divided by three, that's going to be 27, I believe. And so that is partially factored, but it's not completely factored. This is a sum of cubes. And you may have learned this in your class. A sum of cubes follows this formula. If you have a cubed plus b cubed, that's equal to parentheses a plus b. So take the cube root of those. Parentheses a squared minus ab plus b squared. But if you didn't learn that in class, you can go ahead and write that down now, and I'll show you how to use that over here. So that's going to be a 3 on the outside, and then followed by a 2 by 3. And here, it's going to be the cube root of 8. So the cube root of 8, in other words, what number times itself 3 times, is going to be 2. So the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. Take the cube off, and it's just 2x. The cube root of 27 is going to be 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So that's going to be plus 3. That's going to be that first a plus b here. The next part is based off of these values. So this is going to be a squared. 2x squared is going to be 4x squared. We're going to follow that by a minus. Always have the opposite sign of this. And then in the middle, we're just going to combine these two, multiply them together. So it's going to be 2x times 3. That's going to be 6x, so minus 6x. And the last thing is we're going to square the last term. So 3 squared is going to be plus 9. So the completely factorized form of this is 3 on the outside, parentheses 2x plus 3 in your first set of parentheses, followed by parentheses 4x squared minus 6x plus 9 at the end. If this were a multiple choice, you could check this using your graph. Seeing as it is not multiple choice, the best I can do is uh, just see if my answer actually matches up. So here's my original uh, graph of 24x squared uh, cubed plus 81. Here's my final graph of the factorized form. Let me pull that down here under my work. It's the same graph, so I know that my work is correct. So what I have in the box is good. All right, our last video is going to be dealing with graphing technology to use to help solve equations. Again, still EOC review number three. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your help and support.